So I'll start a new topic of vector fields. So uh, everything will be on a plane. And the vector field is an assignment of a vector to every point of a plane. Now, a way to describe that algebraically is to introduce, of course, the coordinate system on a plane. And then each point gains those two coordinates x and y. And then a vector at that point also has coordinates. So if you call this vector u, then it has coordinates u1 and u2. And assignment of a vector to a point amounts to describing what u1 is as a function of x and y. And what u2 is as a function of x and y. So the system of two functions describes a vector field and vice versa. So this is complete algebraic description of a vector field. Now, as I did for the whole semester, I first state a problem about studying all things, right? Like all vector fields. But then the role of calculus is to identify among all the vector fields, those linear vector fields, so that differentiation amounts to replacing an arbitrary vector field with a linear vector field. Right? So we have to understand what linearization is. So we have to figure out what linear vector fields are. And then we will study linear vector fields, we will understand everything about them. And once we do that, we will understand what it means that after we linearize, we can identify some crucial properties of the original vector field. Now the interesting thing about vector fields is that it is not easy at all to understand what linear vector field is geometrically. And we will understand that algebraically, and then we will retroactively look at geometry of those, and you might be surprised what linear vector field is and how geometrically it looks like nonlinear. Uh, so algebraically we have this description, and algebraically it's easy to say what a linear vector field is. Right? It means that whatever you see, whatever functions you see are linear functions. So linear means u1 is a linear function of both x and y. So it's a constant, let's call it uh, b1 plus another constant c11 times x plus another constant c12 times y. Yeah, that's it. And u2 is some constant b2 plus c21 times x plus c22 times y. So this is a general linear vector field. And now we have to understand everything about it. And the first thing to notice is that these constants basically amount to the value of the vector field at the point x equals zero, y equals zero. So the vector made by those constants b1 and b2 is exactly the value of the vector field at the origin.
Well, bring the analogy from calculus one from the equation of a line. And that is the analog of that free term, mx plus b, where b is the value of a function at x equals zero. And that is not what we typically study in calculus. We are more interested in the slope in calculus one. So we will be mostly interested in the many part, truly linear part where degree of variables is one, not zero. So for that reason, I will assume now that the value at zero is zero, and I will look at a vector field in the form u1 equals c11x plus c12y, and u2 being c21x plus c22y. Now that linear vector field is determined by four parameters, and the standard way of putting them together is to make a matrix. C11, C12, C21, C22. So that is sort of analog of a slope of a line from calculus one. Now it contains four numbers put together as a matrix. And in some sense, algebraic way of saying what happens here is to say that this matrix is multiplied by the vector x, y, resulting in the vector u1, u2. But that is just linear algebra way of saying what happens. Uh, basically mimicking the concept of the slope being a number you multiply by. Now you pretend you multiply by a matrix, not a number. Well, we are not going to deal with this linear algebra formality. Uh, what we will be interested in is understanding of this matrix. And understanding means interpreting, right? Because algebraically we understood it all. Well, it contains four numbers. You give me four numbers that determines a matrix. That's it, right? So to understand means to interpret that, to give those numbers some meaning. And again, we, we saw previously that uh, having just a bunch of numbers, you may not have specific meaning for each of those numbers individually. Like for the equation of a plane, ax plus by plus cz plus, uh, equals d, right? Uh, the individual number a didn't carry anything variable. It is only that the vector abc that carries essential information about geometry. So it is not going to be that a number, individual number, makes sense. It is only groups of numbers will make sense. So we have to basically figure out what are those groups of numbers. <laughs>